I am Pastor David Becker, Pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. Present time, we're holding in person services on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. On this, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me, lest, if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and my song, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. For the children's lesson for today, I want to talk about uh, a problem some of us have, and that is we don't hear so good. Some of us have hearing aids, which help, and some of us don't, but that doesn't mean we don't hear that well, even if we don't have hearing aids. And, and um, sometimes it seems as though maybe we might think God needs hearing aids because it doesn't seem like he's hearing and answering our prayers. In the intro that I just read, uh, the psalmist says, um, To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. Yes, there are those times when it seems as though God isn't hearing us. He doesn't seem to be answering the prayer, our prayers, at least in the way we want them answered. But the psalmist goes on to talk about how the Lord does hear. It says, Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and in him my heart trusts. Yes, sometimes it seems as though God isn't listening to us, but that doesn't mean he doesn't hear us. He hears our prayers, he answers our prayers in his own way, in his own time. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. 
and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, and inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order to somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards to election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now has received mercy because of their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came to beg him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And we now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Our text is our Gospel lesson, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, of which I just want to read the following. And Jesus answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat their crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done to eat for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This Canaanite woman prayed, just like we pray. This Canaanite woman had great need, and she didn't know where else to turn. She was, so to speak, at the end of her rope. She was harassed and helpless. 
She was like a sheep without a shepherd. And isn't Jesus the one who's supposed to have compassion on such sheep? So she prays. Prays a prayer we might often pray. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Her problem was her daughter. Her daughter was severely oppressed by a demon, we are told. I don't know exactly what that means. What I do know is the feeling of helplessness when a child is in trouble. It is the feeling you get when you wish there's something you could do for your child, but there's nothing you can do. Even if you don't have children, you know the feeling. You felt it when your friends or parents or even you experienced something you wish would just go away. So she did what you and I have done. She prayed. That's a good thing to do in such times. That's really the best thing to do. But look at the response she gets. Nothing. There's silence. It is as if Jesus didn't even hear her. Apparently, she made sure he did hear her. For the disciples asked Jesus to send her away. She's making too much noise. She wouldn't give up. But still, nothing, just silence. That is until Jesus says to his disciples, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This Canaanite woman was not of the house of Israel. That sounds like rejection to me. We know what this woman is going through when it seems as though our prayers are met only with silence and rejection. Just consider the prayer list that we pray for every Sunday. It's listed in our bulletin. Some of those people we've been praying for We've been praying for for a long time. We pray for healing. We pray for compassion. We pray for miracles. And you know what? I buried some of those people that we prayed for. Others are still waiting, still suffering. And I honestly can't tell you which happens more when there's a happy outcome to our prayers or when our prayers are met with silence and seeming rejection. Well, maybe it was because of who she was. Maybe it was because she was a foreigner, a Canaanite, not of the house of, of Israel. Oh, she uses the right words. She says, oh Lord, son of David. This Canaanite woman is using the right words, but that doesn't change the fact that she was not of the house of Israel. And Jesus knew that. Maybe we wonder sometimes if that's the problem with our prayers. Oh, we use the right words. But Jesus knows who we really are. Jesus knows that we are unholy, unrighteous sinners who may talk the talk, but don't always walk the walk. Maybe we wonder if we're, we are like this woman and we don't deserve to have our prayers answered. Well... Despite the silence, despite our doubts, despite the rebuke, this woman keeps on praying. No more pretense. She may not know what's going on or why Jesus is doing what he's doing. What she does need to know is that uh, her daughter has a need. So she keeps on praying. So she falls on her knees, maybe goes all the way to the ground with her face to the ground and cries out, Lord, help me. Now at this point, if you're like me, you're thinking, okay, that's long enough. She's proven her faith. She's persevered. Now Jesus will help, we think. But instead, Jesus says it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What an insult! It all goes to show that there's nothing about this woman that would cause Jesus to want to help her. In no way does she deserve it. And you know what? That's true for you and me too. 
we shouldn't wonder why some prayers get answered while some seem not to be answered. Well, if we want to wonder about something, what we should wonder about is why should God care about us at all? For we are all sinners who deserve nothing. But this Canaanite woman still doesn't give up. It's, it's as if she's saying to Jesus, call me whatever you wish. You can call me a Canaanite dog. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And that's when Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. And so while this woman may be a Canaanite dog, she is in fact a child of Abraham by faith. And Jesus is the son of David for her too. Just as Jesus was there for that woman, so also Jesus is here for you and me. There's only one reason why that's true. It's because he came to die for all of us dogs. He is here for us, even though we continue to act like dogs sometimes, who continue to do all kinds of things we know we shouldn't do, and who do not do all those things that we know we should do. And so we do as this woman did. We pray, Lord, have mercy. And he is the merciful one. From the very first sin to the very last, from manger to the cross, and now from his seat at the right hand of the Father, which is not some far away place in heaven, but is his place here with us still, as God's right hand man, our brother who is with us as Savior still, with all the authority and power of the Father. And he not only can help, he wants to help. Yes, he wants to help. Even if our prayers seem to be met with silence sometimes, and maybe even rebuke and rejection. Maybe all of that is the help we need right now. You see, the Christian life is not a straight shot to heaven, a fast and smooth super highway. It's more like going off road with lots of twists and turns, bumps and potholes and surprises around every corner. And it sometimes can be humbling and ego bruising when we learn that we cannot rely on ourselves, who we are or what we do, but we must cling to Jesus alone. Even if it means sometimes waiting and crying out into the silence. Your Lord who died for you is good, even when he doesn't seem to be acting very good. You see, life in the world is life under the cross. Just because Jesus died on it doesn't mean we can get away from experiencing crosses ourselves sometimes. As I say, we're living under the cross. But that way, we can get good and bloody wet as his blood washes us clean from our sin and baptism. And as we eat the crumbs that fall from our master's table, his body and blood which feed and strengthen us in his forgiveness, life, and salvation. So in the end, I guess we can say a Christian's life is a dog's life. It will never be the life that is the envy of the world, at least on this side of heaven. But you know what? A dog never had it so good. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. O oh Lord, bless this congregation and church. Grant that it may be a house of prayer, and that we may be people of prayer. O oh Lord, grant that the church may steadfastly proclaim your gifts, that the disobedient may receive mercy, and those who hear can become grafted into Christ, the true vine. O oh Lord, bless all honest work and occupations and grant that we may use well the fruits of our labor. Give us generosity for those in need. Bless the tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise. O oh Lord, grant that the government and those who protect us might keep justice and do righteousness for your sake. 
and according to your will. O Lord, care for those who cry to you, whether beset with grief, sorrow, pain, or trouble, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Be pleased for Christ's sake to answer them according to your will. All these things, whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you'll have a very blessed week.